Because I know that you have to make decisions that are business related about friends and teammates. And you know, the, the most common time for teams to make changes sometimes is right after a TI. You made no roster changes, but then in June, you parted ways with Matumba Man. That had to have been really difficult because you've been playing together as the same players for so long. So I know that that wasn't a decision that you made lightly. No, it was, uh, I mean, I was basically depressed for like four weeks afterwards. It sounds silly because I made the decision, but at the end of the day, being captain, leader, and whatever of this team, it's, I have so much responsibility. Like they're all trusting me after all to make the right decisions. So getting Weha and replacing Mato with Weha is not just like exchanging like a player for a better player. That's not what happened. It's more like it's more like Mato was like a victim of, of these events. Like I, I just needed to change something mm -hmm. right now. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. After I uh, got kicked, quite frankly, from Liquid, um, I had this. Uh, I didn't really know what to do, but after a couple of days, I was pretty certain I wanted to play TI. I had a couple of options of teams to uh, play the qualifiers with. After uh, Poppy approached me to play for Team Secret, and I was thrilled. I felt like it's like it's kind of my uh, second chance because Liquid ended, and then there was this chaos thing, but it wasn't really a thing. This is my second chance now, and. You gotta make it count. That push from the Wind Ranger just made it hard, and that double shackle as well landed on Lion and Emo. As a result, Matumba gets rage off. He starts life stealing. He kills the supports, and then he gets an invest on his ally. His HP slowly going up there, and finally they're able to start picking off heroes when he pops back out. Emo again shackle shot by Yapsor. Those disables so crucial for them to win the fight and grab the Aegis. Emo, Emo just gets thrown around. These Gale Force wins. The DG comes out. Team Secret just look at two dumb dominant. Absolutely incredible performance from Team Secret. They must be so happy right now. Man, that game was even for a long time, but they crushed it. Absolutely crushed it in those mid-game team fights. They force staff their allies. They glimmer cape them. They bought them time to survive, and they won the fight. Absolutely incredible, just neck and neck the entire time. Just watching these two teams battle it out, watching them play a game of cat and mouse the entirety as they just find these openings, and it just looks so gosh darn good. They made IG's heavy gank heroes look kind of mediocre based on the way they played. They made them chase them around the map. They were constantly pushing the top lane. They didn't give IG the space to just get pick off after pick off to set tempo. They just kept the game mostly even with a slight advantage and then they would just walk into Roche because they could kill it so quickly that the time that IG had to react was just, it was like 20 seconds or less every single time. It was just so impressive the way that IG again was sticking in there the entire time. They were trying to be very patient, trying to find those pickoffs. But like you said, Secret, they're just an incredible team. They realized, okay, they've got this little bit of a, I don't want to even say an advantage, but you know, they're staying in there. This is exactly what we need to do, what items we need, and we're just going to be able to run them over if we're patient. Can't wait to see what happens with Secret and the rest of the tournament, but they are absolutely on fire here. I'm really surprised, but hey, good for them. Yeah, they're looking hot and they're going to be continuing and uh, they will take this series 2-0. Thank you very much, Moxie and Purge. Team Secret, their patience that everybody has so praised throughout the years and here at TI as well. That paid off for them, and they have taken the series 2-0 again. This is another 2-0 under their belt against a strong team. Gentlemen, what can we say about this game? It was very back and forth this time. Team Secret didn't really have that firm of a grasp on this game, but how did they manage to take it in the end? It was just a wild one, and I think that's where, you know, Secret just kind of embraced the chaos. They had all these, like, crazy teamfight spells. The Gale Force we saw in full force, something that really hasn't made an appearance too much um, on the TI, this TI, but it's one of those kind of new Aghanim shards that has this crazy impact on fights. Zai Shaker was just jumping in and out of fights. Machu's lifestyle felt unkillable. It was just chaos and secret. They loved it. The, we can talk about the technicalities, but that hug at the end of the game between Yapsur and Papi 
feels good, man. Like, you can see yeah. the emotions, you can feel them, and I'm really happy for them. And they deserve it because they. Like, I'm looking at this game and I'm thinking, how do you beat Secret? Like, it didn't feel like IG was doing anything wrong in this game, and they still just ca couldn't catch a break. Remember when they were chasing Lifestealer on the top lane? The yeah. moment the arena falls, it's the same second that Zai is blinking in and he's getting infested. That's just on point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's October secret. I don't really know <laughs> what to say. It just it, This is what happens every year after year after year. You go, we got August, you have September, and then Team Secret months for a couple of months. And then, you know, they qualify to TI and then things look rough. But no, I, I genuinely think like they seem to have their strategies like really well put together. You saw this Elder Titan. I don't think you play Elder Titan against Team Secret anymore. They they responded with Ench, which made it impossible to play it in the off lane against Puppy. And then they had a Wind Ranger in the opposite end. Elder Titan just had no good lanes. And I think it's just that Hero has not had that issue at TI. It's gotten really good laning phases every single time. October Team Secret had the strats. Now, let's see the stats. And for Team Secret, I believe this is the first time they've ever made it into the top three of any international. This is like huge achievement for them. Yep. And man, they, they did it in very impressive fashion. This, if you're looking at the screen and you're a noob to Dota like me, or you know maybe your your top tier knowledge isn't really there yet, tell me. But when it comes to the stats themselves, you not... can't even tell who won. Like you see this yeah. Kunkka who's six four twelve, this Flyfly Fly Spectre nine four eleven, same net worth as Matu's Life Sealer. It, it shows how even this game was, um, and the fact that if anything, the stats don't really show who won, but. It's Seeker who was just more clutch because of how close like, this game was. Parker and I were talking, watching the game, and we were thinking, how do you kill anyone? How does this Kunkka with Halberd with AC ever die? It was so difficult to take down targets. Uh, well, they managed to pull it out and get a 2-0, but we still have to talk about Invictus Gaming. They did go 0-2, which to most people might think, oh, well, that's not a good score, but they're still a very, very strong team. So let's talk a little bit about what they did well. What do you think What do you think IG's best, best strategy was in that game? I think their adjustments they made for game two are pretty solid. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. I think IG, to me at least, they looked strategically like I feel like Secret, they're taking the first step ahead of the meta now. That's that's the feeling I'm getting. Now, they proved it against OG, they did it against IG, and I think they started adapting. You notice, like, in game two, it was a much, much closer game. And IG quickly realized what they, what they did wrong, and I think they figured out, like, this this could potentially solve the problem. But I think they only got halfway there. And I think the issue, for me at least, stems from the Elder Titan. It's just, it feels like Secret knows. They know what to do. If you pick the ET, I think you're giving Secret the upper hand. That's so interesting because when we were before we went into the draft, you guys were like, "You if secret if if secret lets you pick this hero, they already know how to counter it." It just feels like they're the they're like this ultimate superhero or villain, whichever way you're looking at it, that just can't be stopped. So for the people that are for the teams that are gonna have to play against them, what is what what can they do? What is the strategy? I still haven't figured that out yet. Oh. Try and think two steps ahead, maybe. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say. Uh, like in this chess. game, we see some of these highlights, and it was just always a secret who just somehow come on top of these crazy, chaotic team fights. The Wind Ranger shackles on point, the Gale Force, Zai just constantly breaking up team fights with fissures. They take these heroes that seemingly are one shot ponies, and then they turn them into three-dimensional, I don't even know, <laughs> the fissures, the echoes, yeah. the jumps in to save heroes. They just squeeze every little bit that they can out of those heroes. Yeah, and I feel like, like the games that you see, like even like maybe like a tier 1.5 or lower division DPC teams, you see these crazy spells and these fissures stuff. You see just random stuff happens, I feel. But every time Secret's fighting around them, like it feels perfectly calculated. There's never like a, a fissure that slightly messes up one of his teammates. The four staffs are always used perfectly around it too. So it just feels like Secret fully understand how to use these crazy like mobility spells. And I think to what I to speak about IG, I mean, they almost match them, right? I think like despite being strategically, in my opinion at least, playing from the back foot, they were fighting on even grounds with Secret for most of that game with less resources and in positions where Secret were deciding where you're fighting. Like they were going Roche, mm -hmm. all right, we have to respond. Secret runs to the other side of the map, all right, we have to respond. So even though I feel like IG was put on like the back foot, they were still 
giving them a pretty close shot. So if there is some sort of rematch happening, I think it could be a really, really interesting series. So are you saying that if it was a best of five, that maybe it, things yeah. would have gone differently? I think we could have potentially seen a comeback from IG because they really adapted well into game two. Depending on if they would question mark right. or not. I think game three <laughs> would have a question mark <laughs> from one side. <sighs> well, it was a 2 -0. Let's take a look at this bracket here. So Team Secret will be moving on in the upper bracket. IG will be moving down, facing the winner of Team